Good morning, guys. So it is vlog number three, and um, welcome. So as promised, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what we discussed on Monday's show. That was uh, Digital Photography Cafe, show number 212. And there was some some topics I kind of wanted to get into a little bit more um, in detail with you guys, kind of explain my feelings about it. And um, one of them, which is kind of interesting, is I'm sure you guys know, um, HD, when HD hit the scene, us photographers had to become hybrid photographers, right? So we needed to start shooting video, right? And we saw a lot of photographers go into videography and start capturing weddings with like 7Ds and 5D Mark IIs. And even shows that you see on TV started um, getting shot with a 5D Mark II, which was like revolutionary. Well, then they moved into 4K, right? Now it's like, if you're not 4K, you're nothing, right? During one of the big events, I, I basically talked to some of the big wigs and said, this 4K thing is just, it's just a little blip. Um, 8K is right around the corner. We've seen it. We've seen it uh, in, let's say, prototype form for a while now. Well, what's interesting here is Panasonic said that they were going to release 8K um, right around 2020. And I said that was just ridiculous. They're going to just fall behind the eight ball, just never be possible. So they ended up changing that to 2018. And that still doesn't make sense, right, guys? We're at 4K. That just doesn't make sense. And I think they were kind of yeah, just keeping things under their hat for a bit. And what the rumor is now that 8K from Panasonic on one of their cameras should be released in September and fall for Photokina. Now, we know Photokina runs from the 20th of September to the 25th, and that is in Cologne, Germany. It's a huge camera um, show. It just It just video. Now it's actually video, too. So it's like video. It's all kind of um, imagery, let's call it. The, one of the biggest shows on the planet for photography. Um, and it, there's rumored to release 8K. If this is the case, what's really interesting here is that my understanding is the 5D Mark IV is going to be coming out right around the same time. And at that point, they're going to be releasing 20, I think it was like 28 megapixels and possibly 4K video. And this is what's been going on lately with Canon and Nikon. It's all just iteration, no innovation, nothing new, nothing really spectacular. It's just the same old, same old. They're falling behind the eight ball, right, guys? This is just the way it's been happening. You know, Sony has been eating their lunch lately, right, with their full-frame mirrorless camera with, like, the Sony Alpha A7 line, the A7S2 as well as the R2. So I think this is going to be really a big thing because I tell you what, guys, if Panasonic does release 8K, at Photokina and Canon is sitting at their big, you know, million dollar booth saying, oh, look at this. We're releasing 4K. It's just going to be so lackluster that Panasonic is just going to be sitting there and just giggling like, you know, schoolgirls in their booth. Right. So I don't know what's going to come to pass with that, but it kind of goes into a question that I was asked about about a week ago, I'd say. And it had to do with lenses and what lenses to buy and where should we be. And I've always said camera bodies are like toilet paper. They come and go really quickly. The cycle is so quick. The timeline is crunched so tight that there are some point and shoot cameras that come out every four or five months, right? Constantly this iteration. So I always tell people, listen, if you want to spend your money, you got money burning a hole in your pocket, what do you do? You either, either buy glass or you buy education. You know, educate yourself, that's forever, and glass, for the most part, is forever also. I mean, here's an example. This is a lens from, like, the 70s that I use for my Minolta, right? And this lens is absolutely tack sharp. The glass in this is absolutely unbelievable, and I still use it for some fine artwork today. Um, you know, where you have this, which is literally 10, 15 years old, this bazooka, right? This is a 300 straight um, L glass monster. And this is still, I mean, you can see that it's been used pretty uh, pretty harshly, let's say. But it's got a lot of, lot of miles on this, and it's still perfect. So, you know, this is the type of glass I tell people to buy, and this is a good way to go if you're going to spend money. The problem with this idea here is the idea of video. And now everyone's capturing video. So we're always looking for cameras that not only capture video like a 70 or 5d mark II, a 5d mark III, and so on and so forth but we're looking for a camera that's like a 70d 
that will actually track faces and will be able to just by pushing anywhere on the screen, track a specific point and keep locked in on that spot. Keep that focus in that spot or follow the child, let's say running through the frame or in soccer, let's say running across the field, lock in on that person and it'll track. We're looking for that. The problem with that is, is the old glass won't do it, right? Guys, you need like STM glass that will. So what do you do? Do you buy STM or do you buy old style type of glass? Now, it's a really, it's it's a hard thing. And what I was explaining to the person that asked the question is, you know, if you want to buy glass, I still think buying the older style glass and not the STM right now is the way to go. You can get STM just for your specific video needs or for spe specific bodies, that's fine. But buy the older glass. And the reason being is things are changing so quickly STM might not be the way to go. And if that's the case, you're buying this type of style glass that you really don't need and you're paying for it now up front where the whole technology might change. Um, not that far away. So the whole idea of focus by wire and STM glass is, is fantastic. Like I said, the problem is, is we don't know if it's going to stay, if that's going to be the de facto way um, or type of glass that we will need in the future. So once again, old glass, I think this is still the way to go. This in education, because the old glass is gonna be around forever. You're gonna be able to use this in the future for just about any camera for that specific manufacturer. They usually carry them forward. Personally, for me, don't get digital glass, don't get crop sensor glass, get full frame glass. You'll be able to use it either way. Um, and it'll, like I said, last you a lifetime. So anyways, that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like it if you like it. And if you have any comments or questions, please send them. Put them down below in the comments area. I'll be happy to answer them. So we'll talk to you next time. Take care, guys.